Now, almost 40 years after his death, there is almost nothing left to remind Chicago of the reign of Al Capone. Nothing except the old Lexington Hotel, which for several years served Capone as his headquarters. On April 21st, 1986, Al Capone's headquarters at the old Lexington Hotel became the focus of the nation. Live from the Windy City, Chicago, Illinois, a worldwide two-hour television event from Al Capone's former headquarters in the Lexington Hotel. Tribune Entertainment and the Westgate Group are proud to present The Mystery of Al Capone's Vaults. Directly beneath me, in this hotel's rubble-strewn basement, a massive concrete chamber has been discovered, and there is evidence to suggest that that vault once belonged to Al Capone, the richest and most powerful gangster of his time. Excavation and As talk show host Geraldo Rivera promised to blow open the brick vaults below. A hidden staircase that Capone could use in the hotel, a raid happens, they come in the front door, he just came down this hidden staircase and then disappeared through a tunnel system. The two-hour special was produced through the facilities of WGN-TV and became one of the most spectacular examples of stunt TV ever produced. WGN cameraman Jim Splosky worked on the broadcast. I was working in news at the time and engineering needed some people, so they needed some extra camera people. And it was, yeah, it was a huge WGN production in the South Loop. So we're out here in Sugar Grove. Uh, my wife and I have lived out here since uh, 1996. Explosives expert Gerald Janik coordinated the blasts. Thinking about the process of of blowing up the walls, I decided, well, wouldn't this be an excellent idea to bring, you know, a blasting machine from that period of time? You know, how appropriate was that? So, that's what I did. Here's Dennis, he was my blasting assistant, and uh, what he's pointing to is the wall that we set the two charges. We drilled two 24-inch deep holes in this uh, limestone foundation. I ran off about 300 feet of cable to the back of the Lexington Hotel, WGN helicopter flying over. A WGN helicopter hovered overhead as more than 100 journalists from around the world were there to chronicle what many anticipated would be a revelation of Prohibition era secrets. What do you think's in the bowl? Gosh, I don't know, time will tell. Take a guess. Gosh, I don't know. How about you, sir? Well, I probably think there's bones in there. You think bones? I think there's yes, bones Yes, sir, what do you think? Cash, definitely. Cash, cash. Possibly dead bodies, piles of cash, barrels of bootlegged booze, even an arsenal of Capone's weapons. Describing as the chamber within a chamber, the vault within a vault. And then we cleared it. Okay, everything's ready. And then they, when they pushed it down, we hit this, push the button, and that fires the charge. We're about ready to, uh, to go. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Here I am for the blown open wall. Now we've blown down one wall. We have, uh, we've pulled oh. down another. Uh, we, we're digging in, we're getting there. <laughs> I wonder if I can get a deposit on a 60 year old bottle. In the end, all that was found was an empty whiskey bottle. Hold it. Hold it. it seems, at least up to now that we've struck out with the vault, I'm disappointed about that as I'm sure you are. This is one time in my life that a uh, pot of gold would have been a lot more fun than uh, chasing the rainbows. But Janik kept the red helmet that Geraldo wore. He put his helmet over my equipment and took off with his, his entourage and it's like never came back. And that anniversary led us to another mystery vault involving WGN. We're in the back hallways of WGN, a part of the television station that viewers don't normally see. This is not an exit. Think of it as more of an entrance to a story 75 years in the making. By now, you've probably heard that Channel 9 is celebrating its 75th year on the air. And we've been remembering the history of Channel 9 with a series of stories. It all started with a trip to the archives on the third floor. really loud in here. There's a lot of stuff going at once. All the water rushing over our heads in these pipes. This is where WGN's heating, 
cooling, electrical, mechanical, fan, and exhaust systems are all located, along with parts of the old Bozo Show set. We're at the end of this long hallway, and there are multiple doors behind which there are thousands of hours of tapes from WGN's history. There's just tons of old footage up here. I mean, this is all the parades, Thanksgiving, St. Patrick's Day. What do we got here? The Lights Festival, Bud Billiken. So here in the archives, there are boxes and boxes of old Bozo Show scripts. And we found this stack of tapes on top of a box behind which there was a locked safe, and no one in the station knew this was here, and no one even knew how to open it, what the combination was. I had no idea there was a safe in here, none whatsoever. Looks like a pretty old safe, though. Any idea what would be in a safe up here? The building was, uh, I think, from the early 60s, right? 1960, 1961, so I would imagine Maybe something from the early 60s? I've been here 37 years and I had no idea there was a safe up here. You wonder what's so valuable that they would protect it in a safe all these years. One day I got an email from the director of IT asking if I knew the combination of the safe on the third floor. I asked around, I asked production, they didn't have any information, I asked programming, they didn't know either. So uh, I went to the director of engineering from 10 years ago and said, would you happen to know the combination? And he said, oh yes, it's in a card uh, at my old desk. Sure enough, the card was still there. It's in this envelope. I'm Andy Sarcady. I'm the engineer in charge of the news department, and I was asked to open the safe. No one had ever talked about it or, uh, or really ever noticed it before. It was um, kind of hidden in a weird spot. Combination states, turn dial four times to the left, stopping on nine. Turn dial three times to the right, stopping on 27. Turn dial two times to the left, stopping on 48. Unlike Capone's vault, when we opened the safe, we did find some interesting items. First, we have this netware. These are floppy disks that contained computer software for the station back in the 1990s. Then we found these much larger floppy disks from the mid-1980s. This one is from 1986 and had all the graphics for Cubs game broadcasts. Then we found this. This is a data cartridge that could hold about 10 megabytes of information, which is the equivalent of about two quality photographs on your iPhone today. And then we found these archive tapes. One of them had the film Chariots of Fire. And the other was a recording of Family Classics with Roy Leonard, who was showing the film The Mask of Zorro. Real swashbuckling role. And Hollywood took advantage of his newfound popularity. <laughs> and then there is this, the original reel-to-reel -reel air check of one of the most notorious incidents in Chicago broadcast history. On November 22nd, 1987, the WGN signal was hijacked for a number of seconds by somebody dressed as Max Headroom, right in the middle of the nine o'clock newscast as Dan Roan was delivering the sports. Richard Dent circling in to get Chuck Long, part of a much improved effort by the D. I know that uh, the defense wasn't getting the sacks. I know the defense was breaking down, things like that. But, uh, you know, things like that happen sometimes. Well, if you're wondering what's happened, <laughs> so am I. It may seem rather humorous, but there is more to it than that. For when this person is caught, he or she will face both civil and criminal penalties. And finally, there are these keys to a Chrysler. We're not exactly sure where this vehicle is. Who knows? Maybe that's the next mystery we'll unlock. 
I think it was the Bozo Mobile, don't mm, you? Could be. Mm -hmm. I mean, with a bunch of clowns that would come out of the car. I mean, that's how it worked. <laughs> wow, what a time capsule. Unbelievable. One note about the Max Headroom incident. It's believed the same person also hijacked WTTW, their mm. signal that night. And to this day, the culprit has never been caught. Mm. Might be watching right now. So to find all of our special coverage celebrating WGN's 75th anniversary, visit WGNTV.com slash 75. A lot of great stories there. Um